I want to actually demonstrate that I had understood everything from this clip and I feel really annoyed. One thing I didn't really quickly grasp was really the real identity of this monster. But the problem is, you know, it was very obvious to me that, you know, she was referring to you know, Jeff when she was talking about this monster. Because, you know, when she actually said that you hang out with this monster, she was actually already, you know, up until that moment talking to Larry. And you know, every little circumstance up until the moment was clearly suggesting that she actually had a, an acquaintance with Larry David and she really actually you know, serves him because Larry was her customer. I mean, I mean, that was really very, uh, that was at least very obvious to me. I can't get out of it. It's Phil Rosenthal, he just, what do you do? How many times? I can't get out of it. You know, the thing is, you know, uh, Phil Rosenthal, this guy is really bad at noticing like tiny signals in the social communication. That means you know what he would have never let him go. So when 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 you hang out with uh, Phil Rosenthal, then this guy would really stay with him forever and more. You know, so clingy. He would actually prattle on about things so trivial. So Larry definitely wants to get out of the conversation. He wants to actually, you know, keep this as sure as possible. Whenever there is an appointment or whenever, you know, he was supposed to have a meal with the Phil Rosenthal, he wanted to actually make it sure. He wanted to actually, you know, make an exit from this, right? He wanted to take a powder. He wanted to take a moonlight, right? So, you know, how many times, you know, this really happened? That's a problem. And how many times, you know, should he repeat the situation? That was a really, and he said, you know, how many times should I do this, right? Whenever we say goodbye to each other, he would never accept, accept it at face value. It's like you swallow goodbye and you say goodbye to me, but you're going to continue talking, like, it's like that. Goodbye. I see you later. I catch you later. You know what? Like this. You know what? But before you go, you know, hey, you know what? You know this? Like, you know, he would have never let me go. That wasn't what Larry said. You say no. You couldn't do the big goodbye. I did the big goodbye. So saw right through it. Mm -hmm. ah. You, you couldn't actually do the big goodbye. I mean, this big goodbye means a real goodbye. You know, can you honestly actually, you know, have you ever tried this one? You know, say, you know what? Goodbye, goodbye, I'll feed us in. Like, you know, you actually really say goodbye. You know what? Did you actually try to give him additional notices? Like, you know, saying, hello, you know, this is a real goodbye. You should accept it. Beat it. Like, this kind of, you know, connotations. Like, you know, he's, I mean, Phil Rosenthal allegedly is so poor at noticing something, you know. I need it. I need it. Goodbye. You know, he really couldn't actually let him go. Like, so did you really try this one? Saying big goodbye, you know? It means, you know, did you really mean what you said? Like, you know, did you actually try to convince him that this is it? You know, I'm going. I've got to get going. Like, thingy. Goodbye. Like, you know. You know what I'll do? I'll call you in the middle of lunch. So, you know, if you can actually, you know, handle this guy, you know what, I'll try to give you a call. That means, you know, Jeff really wanted to do the weightlifting. You know what, if Phil Rosenthal, the guy is that clingy, you know, I'll help you. Let me, I'll try to actually give you a phone call in the middle of the meal. When you guys are having the lunch, I can actually make a phone call so you can quickly leave the scene. You can actually make a smooth departure without hurting his feelings. That was, you know, what, what has been suggested. This proposal was made by Jeff here. Say it's an emergency, you gotta go. Mm -hmm. At the last... You actually say, you know, that you have, you, 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 are, you probably actually say that you have emergency. Like, you know what, uh, like you, you can fake a situation. When I, when I actually give a phone call, you can say that, oh my gosh, that happened to you? Really? This is a real emergency. You have to go. You know you know what? You just heard this, right? You know, I have a serious situation going on. I have to go. You know, I'm so sorry to tell you, but I've got to get going. Like, you know, you can fake this. Like, that was really the suggestion. Jeff floated this idea. But the thing is... I'm high at lunch with him. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I already actually used that mojo before 
you know, when I last time I had a meal with them, we already actually, you know, used that scheme. We already took advantage of it. You know, this was already, you know, not really debunked. But the thing is, you know, Larry and Jeff already actually had this before. You know, Jeff gave a phone call and Larry said, oh, really? You had a mercy? You broke your leg? Come on, I'm going to actually help you. You know, I'll stay right there. I'm going to get, I'm going to, I'm going to be there in less than a minute. Like, you know. Oh, boy, that guy's from that lesson. We mm -hmm. Quite that guy is so relentless. I mean, you know what? Quite that guy is relentless. I mean, you know, this guy is really persistent when it comes to acting on staying with Larry. This guy is so clingy. This guy, you know, I couldn't let go of Larry. You know, he is really drawn to Larry. I don't know. But whenever, you know, when this feel, I start a conversation with Larry or I have a meal with Larry, then, you know, he would never let him go. That's a problem. Golf on Saturday? Yeah, um, I don't even know where it is if you could play. Mm hmm So when uh, you want to play your golf on Saturday and like, you know, but the thing is, Ernie you Nolan, know, this is another guy, um, has been mentioned here, but the problem is, you know what, Jeff never actually want to play golf with this person, play the golf with this person, because, you know what, he is a, a term supporter carrying a MAGA hat. So the red hat is really a no no thingy, right? A total taboo. I'm not playing with him, he's a Trump supporter. I'm not playing the game with them because he's a Trump supporter. Means you know what there would be a no round of golf because he is a, he's like a moron who's been following Donald Trump, who's been a big supporter of Donald Trump. There is no way I would have played the game with them. Never played the Trump supporter. Never play the game with a Trump supporter. I don't hang out. I don't personally play the golf with any Donald Trump supporters. So annoying. Oh, yeah, see him around town with that hat. Make America great again. I don't need that crap. Mm -hmm. He said, you know what? I don't want to be spotted with someone wearing this ugly hat in this town in the Golden State. You know what? That type of, you know, crap is totally unnecessary. I mean, he doesn't really want to be embarrassed because of him. He doesn't really want to be asked. He doesn't want to carry the ball just because of, you know, when this golf buddy's predilection, right? If, if you know what, what type of trouble you were getting into, if you carry this kind of hat in California and people would have said, oh, he's so, and he's like a Trump, can you can you possibly believe that he's a trust supporter? It's so ugly. It's so annoying. You know, like people would never go easy on you, or you could actually really have a run in with other people, right? So because of this type of uh, revulsion, you know, Larry actually got he's you know light bulb on in his brain. Yeah, he actually had a great idea. He came across a, an amazing idea. Oh, if that is the case, you know, I could have possibly, you know, be separated from this Phil guy. I can actually really, I actually need to find a way to put a damper on his fervor for me. Where I could at least be, you know, as naturally, um, I don't know. He just really, he, he's really desperate to find a way to say goodbye to him or be the farewell to him, right? But he couldn't actually come up with a discordious way. But you know, this field guy is terrible at reading social cues, nonverbal cues. So he would have never let him go. So he thought that, you know, this mega head would be a, his magic bullet. He couldn't actually you know, wave his magic wand. So, you know, whenever he actually puts this thing on, you know, it would actually do wonders. Let me show you. He just, he makes me want to not be anywhere near him. Mm hmm You know what? This, you know, Ernie guy carrying a MAGA hat, he is really repulsive just because of this annoying hat. You know, whenever he carries this hat or whenever he's, you know, around me, I just simply don't want to be nearby him. I don't know, because of his you know, affiliation, political affiliation, or his you know, interest in Donald Trump, whatever, you know, it would only actually you know, draw negative, it would only draw negative attraction from other people in this town. It would be like, you know, so peevish. You know, I, I would have find, I would have find this so unnecessary to hang out with him because whenever I would be with him, 
every eyes every eye would be on him because of his head and the people would actually mock him he would be the laughing stock whether that would be expressed or not so i don't know you can check with carol see if he wants to play so you can check out carol if he wants to play that means you know what if you really want to have if you really desperately want to play golf or if you really wanted to have a round of golf then you know what you can actually do it by yourself all right but leave me out you can actually check this you can check out the sky but you know what spare me from this annoyance spare, spare me from this noisance i don't really actually want to hang out the sky so if you really want to actually have this golf this person as your golf buddy you can actually check him out but never let me be part of it i don't want to join this camp i don't want to actually you know play the game with them so if you really if you are that desperate to play the game with them then please contact him by yourself do not drag me into the scenario you know i don't want to be part of this game that's what he said you know what, Larry, you know what, you were so desperate to play the game. If you were that desperate, you can actually contact him by yourself. But don't drag me, don't drag me into the scenario. Don't actually bring me into the scenario. You can actually handle the situation. You can actually meet him by yourself and enjoy the game if you really want to. But you know what, leave me out, count me out. I gotta go. Talk I gotta go. Larry actually had a brilliant idea. He was inspired by this in the world. Well, I mean, I would say this re reaction, right? Um, what would we write when Larry was inspired to uh, use the circumstance, right? He thought that, you know, uh, people normally feel so repelled. And the people would actually find this person so disgusting whenever they're able to carry a MAGA hat, right? I don't know. So, no, I didn't actually take, I mean, I didn't use it. Hello? Hello there. Hi. Hi. I'm Phil Rosal. I have a 12 o'clock. Oh, yes. Mr. David's already here. He is? Yes. So, you know, Phil Rostel and 12 o'clock, you know, he already made a reservation at this restaurant, right? But the thing is, you know, your partner is already there. He was pleasantly surprised, right? He is, this type of, you know, nonverbal cue is very obvious. Larry would not be an enthusiastic participant in this conversation, right? Normally, he should be the one who made an appointment or he should always reach out to Larry, right? So Larry would have found this uh, relationship rather lukewarm and tepid, right? So he was really surprised. Oh, what on earth happened to Larry? How in the first place he came ahead of me, before me? He is waiting for me. Can you honestly believe that Larry arrived here before me to simply welcome me? You know, I was very surprised. And Larry actually you know, arrived at this restaurant well before me. Wow, very impressive. Very, very impressive. He came here early. He came here earlier than you. Can you honestly believe that? He actually, you know what, was waiting for you. Wow, what happened? But you, you should also check out, you know, how yeah, appalled he was to figure out Larry carrying this hat, you know, it's a crazy, technically this is a cap, but you know, when, when people actually said the MAGA hat, I, I actually noticed that people just actually call this MAGA hat, or a MAGA hat, right, but, you know. Well, good to see you, sit, sit down, sit down. Boy, I'm so glad we did this. It was such a good idea. You you were definitely right. I'm I'm starving. I hope this place is good. Yeah, yeah. So in a way, just simply carrying this hat already actually had a negative impact on them, right? Because everyone was not really enjoying this scene, right? They they consider this as a sight for the um it's really the opposite. 
you know, I would ask that they find they find the situation、um, very uncomfortable. And Larry already actually draw attention, draws attention from the rest of people. All eyes are on Larry, but they're not enjoying the situation, right? They gave him a look, right? A look filled with disgust or contempt or discomfort. So you know he was pretty much annoyed. Larry, can you please take this thing off? Like that kind of look, right? Great, it's a big portion sum, the food and everything. But you know, he's actually saying something very sweet. You know, something totally unlike Larry Davis. Larry Davis normally actually do, does not enjoy this social setting, but he said this like, "Oh, you know what? I'm I'm dying to have something. I'm starving. I'm so hungry. You know, it was such a great idea for you to actually pick this beautiful restaurant and invite me over. Like, you know." Larry, it's so unlike Larry. Normally, Larry is not that much hyped up about our meeting, but you know he is really the one who has been in charge of this whole thingy. But the thing is, he's been carrying this ugly thingy. That's really the reason why all eyes are on the on them, and they were actually being watched by people. What? Like you know what? Are you serious? He's really carrying this hat. You know he. This guy actually has guts to carry this in California, and he actually drags his damn fucking body into this restaurant to stay with us or dine with us. Are you sure about that kind of luck? It's really a fantastic place. You know what? So you know he's really actually you know having a mixed feelings, mixed mixed feelings really. Uh, on one hand, he's been actually really enjoying this Larry's behavior, like you know, because not really, not really enjoying, but he was not actually fully convinced. But he's kind of actually you know responding to Larry's comments, saying that yeah, this is a really great place. They、uh, they actually you know, um, they give you enough food, a big portion. They give you know they were generous about the food portions.、So、they were not actually being stingy, so you're never gonna be hungry after finishing the meal. So they gave you sufficient food, right? They were gonna give, they were gonna serve you well, and then、uh, the food quality is nice. This is a really great place. But the thing is, so I mean, he actually was really really surprised, you know. When Larry welcomed the situation, oh, what the hell? What happened to Larry? Why he would be happy to meet me? And he's been actually that much, you know, enthusiastic about our dining out. It's so unlike Larry. Like, but the thing is, you know, people are really, really bothered by Larry seeing this, carrying this hat, right? That's really the right. That's really the reason why he couldn't actually find the place where he's where he should have put his eyes, right? He should have put his eyes to somewhere, but he couldn't actually find where. To where should I put my eyes? Like you know, he's been actually wondering. He's been puzzled, right? He couldn't figure out how to behave, how to actually you know keep his composure because all eyes are on Larry. I've been thinking, really thinking about the Ethiopia thing. Yeah.、Mm-hmm. I- you know what, Larry is such a genius. He just actually dropped this in a TNT issue, because he knew that、uh, the wind would actually bl- blow. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I know Larry actually thought that you know he wanted to have this in a scene. Filmed in Ethiopia, right? Or he really actually wished, you know, they wanted to have you know certain portion of the movie, you know, crafted or engineered in Ethiopia. Maybe I don't know. But the thing is, up until that moment, normally the production guy would, this production guy would say, no, Ethiopia is impossible. So he knew that, you know. This film would not necessarily welcome his idea, so he he and Larry definitely figured out how sensitive this issue is. I heard that we have some budget cuts, and Ethiopia is a little expensive to. So we have a budget budget cuts, and Ethiopia would be a little bit expensive for us to actually you know have this scene filmed, right? That's what he said. 
because of this, you know, connotation associated with the bag of hat and Donald Trump administration focusing on, you know, austerity or slashing federal funds, you know, all eyes are again on, you know, this table, right? People are not welcoming and they're, they are, they take, they immediately take a dislike to these people, right? To these people. They really actually don't appreciate what they are overhearing. They actually know what involuntarily, inadvertently, uh, eavesdropped on, eavesdropped on you know, the, their conversation. But you know, it's weird that how xenophobic it might actually sound. Because you know, the MAGA hat guy, this MAGA hat guy is having a conversation with the other, another guy on the opposite side, right? There were two guys. One guy is wearing a mega hat, and the other one is really a normal one, but he actually voices his um, disinterest in Ethiopia. Think about it. This, is, this has a connotation about a travel ban. Donald Trump at the time really disparaged many of third world countries Third world countries are saying that it's really, they were like, you know, a shithole, they're really dirty and disgusting. You remember, you know, how House of Representative member, I mean, he, he was a congressman who actually passed away years ago, Aliyah, Aliyah Cummings, right? He was actually from Maryland, but Donald Trump actually depicted his congressional district as a rat hole or shit hole, like you know, he used a, such an such a disparaging and pejorative word for his district, right? But there were actual people living there. How would you do that? You're you're a president who was supposed to represent the entire country called the United States of America, and. A representative, late representative Elia Cummings Congressional District was also represented by the President of the United States of America at the time. But how could he possibly say that? And Donald Trump imposed a travel ban on Muslims, right? Those are major Muslim countries were actually having difficulty because of this, right? Any travelers are coming from so-called major Muslim countries or those countries heavily populated by Muslims, they could not actually, you know, secure their access to the United States, right? Because of his xenophobic approach. So if you ever actually think about this connotation, you would actually notice that he said, you know, really, I mean, any, he said something legit saying that, you know, because of the budget cut, oh, this, you know, shooting or filming in Ethiopia is not really possible. That's not actually on the table. That's what he said, you know. But the thing is, this lady, he found the message very impulsive. Excuse me? What was that again? Ah, uh, like, you know. Shooting. Wasn't that you know, Because, you know, like, this hat has a magical power to uh, make this a you know, plain message, a xenophobic, a xenophobic statement. Oh, you again attacked, you know, this country called Ethiopia because of your belief. Is that what, you know, Dalton told you to do? I mean, that kind of look. Oh, no wonder why there, at least, you know, she has a look like that. No wonder why, you know, he voiced such a negative viewpoint on the country like Ethiopia, no wonder. Nothing new there, but offensive, right? The shithole countries, I can't remember if that was on the list or not. Oh, oh I can't remember that shithole country was on the list or not. So, you know, when he was actually intentionally pulling off this stunt to embarrass him, or at least, you know, want to turn the, turn the tables around him. So, you know what? Larry probably was a little bit drawn to this Ethiopian sh local shooting, you know, or Ethiopia located shooting, but he couldn't actually get it done, you know, because, you know, this production guy, this guy part of the, pro I mean, part of the production was not fully convinced. There is a huge price tag attached to it. So he signed either a, a practical reason to avoid the shooting, saying that, 
oh, you know what? It would actually cost me too much amount of money. It would have cost an arm and leg if we ever actually look. If we ever actually uh, have our team or crew located in Ethiopia, right? But once the, he said that, Larry, roll, just banking on his, you know, and banking on the power of his mega hat, he just likes to say it does something very damning. Oh, you know, that shithole, you know. I'm not really so sure that shithole country was on the list or not. It literally sealed the deal, right? I mean, you know, those are real, authentic, you know, Trump followers. People really would not have a second idea about the situation, right? They would have never have a second thought about him. So he felt so embarrassed because that, that never represented his ideology. That's not part of his philosophy. He just got trapped by, you know, Larry's stunt. Because, you know, what Larry wanted is, you know, a, a locate, a Ethiopia located shooting. And also, I mean, that's, that may, that may be, you know, just a one single issue he possibly truly want or not. That's really a, to me, you know, it sounds really like, you know, this Ethiopian thingy is really a secondary issue. What Larry really want to see is, you know, to put an end to this meeting as quickly as possible. Larry wants to break out of this restaurant because he never enjoyed this talking. So he, he just all, I mean, he literally actually channeled all his energy to this, you know, stunt. So in that way, he would actually be so embarrassed. So he really took a powder. Look, I'm getting that thing. Oh. Oh yeah, oh look at that, um, uh, my son's flight uh, got in early, and I gotta get him, I gotta go. Mm -hmm. So my son's flight got in early, that means my son's flight, my my son was supposed to arrive here, but the thing is, you know, his flight arrived here earlier than expected. Because of this early arrival, I have to go, I have to get myself going. So you know, he literally, he literally actually you know, made an excuse to actually, you know, excuse himself, right? Now that's unusual because the field is so cleansy. He would like to normally go on forever and more when he is talking to Larry. Even Larry actually said it. But Larry even actually, you know, gestic gesticulated a bit, a bit goodbye. Goodbye, I have to go, you know. But you know what, Larry, in this way, you know, he would actually continue this conversation, spinning a yarn forever and more. Adam. Really? Yeah, no, really. Let's, let's, let's send, send an Uber or something. He needs to see me because he has uh, a little anxiety. No, no. Mm -hmm. He needs to see me because he has a little anxiety. You know what? Now he's so desperate to step out of this restaurant because he's so embarrassed. You know what? He needs to see me because he has anxiety. He needs to, he's a daddy because he suffers from anxiety disorder and I have to get going. You know, he literally actually feels so ashamed of being part of this mega head guy's life. Because, you know, I mean, imagine what it is like to be in California with this mega head, especially when Donald Trump's heinous enormity was at its peak, right? You know, emotions run deep and people feel very offended in this scene. I mean... So, you know, he re literally quickened his steps out of this restaurant. And Larry really, you know, wanted to take hold of him. But it wasn't really a fake one. Because Larry never, never actually wanted to hang out with him. So Larry used this stunt. Because Larry was tipped off by, you know, his friend Jeff. Because Jeff had a certain issue with a guy who would be normally part of this golf round, but you know, ever since he became a Trump supporter, uh, Jeff no longer really wanted to be part of him. Never want to actually be nearer to him because this is so repulsive. It's like a repellent. Whenever this person, I mean, whenever any person carries this kind of hat, you know, they just immediately um, want to distance themselves from. Those supporters, right? So Larry actually knew how, you know, people in California normally react to Donald Trump supporters, right? 
and um, he, uh, it's, I don't think it's really important. The, the actual, uh, I don't think, you know what, it really matters a lot to Larry whether this you know, a shooting would truly occur in Ethiopia. It could, but it would only be a secondary issue. He really actually you know, faked the situation this way because he knew uh, things could actually end up being in this way. He knew that he could actually shame him in front of everyone by actually directing the situation to, I mean, uh, leading the situation to the direction of xenophobia, which is really um, a constant theme, right, of the Trump administration. So, you know, when any reasonable statement could be misinterpreted, like, Oh, because of the budget cut, you know, Ethiopian local shooting would not be possible. Then, you know, that you know that country is really you know dirty and the bestial and so retarded. It's like a shithole. It's like the cesspool of humanity. Like that kind of bad words. Those are really the actual words used by Donald Trump. Because you know when he was talking about the late congressman, you know Elia Cummings, the district, he literally actually you know disparages the light quality of his own people. Think about it. This district was a part of the United States. That means you no know, the president of the United States represented the, you know even representative Cummings' home district. How would he possibly ever use those kind of language? to portray his own people's residents. So, you know what, this is really kind of, uh, uh, I think, you know what, Larry wanted to echo the xenophobia of, or jingoism, or, you know, all different negative feelings Donald Trump might have against, you know, those developing countries. So he just actually, you know, he became a copycat of Donald Trump on purpose. So in that way, he knew this could shame any cosmopolitan Californians. So this person actually immediately make a departure, right? This person makes a departure so quickly. He literally ran out of, stepped out of the restaurant in haste. You know what, to, Phil? No, no, we'll, 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 something. No, we'll do something. No, not even actually, we'll talk, we'll talk to each other later. No, he couldn't even actually know, mention this. Oh, I don't want to be associated with this person. You know, it's so shameful for me to actually be identified with this type of person. So, you know, we something. What does that mean? Why did he say we'll something? You know, it, normally when you actually say goodbye, you know, Oh, you know what? We'll talk to each other some things. See you later. We'll actually meet each other sooner or later. You know, we'll actually going to be part. We'll, we're going to meet each other. We're going to see each other together later. Bye. But, you know, we something. We'll something. He couldn't even actually dare to say that we have a plan to see each other again. Because I'm so shameful of being part of your life. I don't want to be associated with you. I don't want to be, you know, seen in that way. You know, at least, you know, in public. I mean, from the perspective of the public, I don't want to actually be associated with you. It's so shameful that I would ever be, you know, perceived by others as a part of the Donald Trump supporter or the company of the Donald Trump supporter. That's humiliating, disgusting, and it's so repulsive. So I have to take power. I have to leave the scene as quick as possible. And I don't even want to see, I don't... You know, I don't know he truly meant that we'll, we'll something, but at least in front of everyone, I don't want to confirm the fact that I'm going to hang out with the Donald Trump supporter. At least I don't want to be seen as a person who's been regularly hanging out or, you know, having a private meeting with the Donald Trump supporter. So we can't even actually, you know, dare to say that, oh, we're going to see each other soon. or We're going to talk to each other soon. Will something, you know, he just actually really fumbled because he knew, you know, this could not be, you know, welcomed by people in front of everyone here. Because, you know, these are really like, I mean, like-minded people who have a zero tolerance, no threshold for Donald Trump's beliefs or Donald Trump's supporters, right? So this really actually reflected, you know, biases from both sides. 
um, people, I mean, this is really an exaggerated version. People who are actually living in California, they have zero respect for any person who's been at least seemingly associated with Donald Trump. This could be a bias too. Because you know what? You should actually get to know someone before you actually make a snap judgment to rule out any possibility of hanging out with this person. That's really bad, right? So you can actually, you know, um, be part of these people, even though you might not actually, you know, see eye to eye on political issues, or you should never disparage the dignity of that person just because of, you know, one's political affiliations, right? It could actually be also, you know, a serious bias. Or, you know, Larry thought that, you know, um, also, you know, um, Donald Trump's supporters were really idiotic, you know, they they do not have respect for other foreigners. The administration really harmed the reputation of the United States by imposing a travel ban on um yeah, any travelers are from the major Islamic countries, all right? The so-called the major Islamic countries where um, their populations or their peoples are likely dominate, likely to be dominated by the Muslims, right? I mean, really, you know, and target both of them equally, right? But if you want me to actually go on everything, I can actually really do that. I really listen to every little single syllable here almost. I don't really need to repeat any of them. I really heard that. And I wasn't really offended when he said that I was not actually getting this idea about monster. Although, you know what, I was not able to quickly come up with the idea that, you know, um, Harvey Weinstein was a really jaff. This lady was mistaken, I mean, mis I mean, mistaken about the identity of Jeff, right? But why, why was I so obsessed with Donald Trump's Access Hollywood language? Because I thought that it was a leg up. It was a lead up to this whole situation. In this context, without Jeff, I mean, without Larry David's words, like, you know, the grab the pussy with the mega head thingy, you know, those type of props were not there. She might not have necessarily mistaken Jeff for Harvey Weinstein. I do not think so. That was really the reason I was actually really holding on to that thought, and he was not listening to me, obviously. Because, you know, I was actually constantly talking about these words by Donald Trump, because this was a part of the Access Hollywood clip. You know, it became so sensational. Everyone thought that you know, Donald Trump would never be the president. Immediately following from this, you know, bombshell revelation. This was a video clip released containing um, Donald Trump's private moments, right? I mean, scenes from the Donald Trump's private dialogue with the apprentice executive producer or something like that, right? So, you know, it really, really revealed his misogynic aspect or facade, right? So everyone thought that, you know, if his election was over, there was no chance he could go on like this. His, his viability as a candidate was completely done. But, you know, James Comey obsession with Hillary Clinton really changed the scenario also. I mean, also there was a DNC email hacking, you know, John Podesta and uh, the DNC chairwoman, Debbie Schultz Wasserman's email accounts were hacked to reveal uh, such a corrupt in practices by the DNC, right? That was also one great factor. And also what? Mm. And James Comey decided to continue his investigation into the Benghazi email account by Hillary Clinton or Hillary's yeah, failure to keep up with the security measures, right? When she was a, the Secretary of State. When she was a, a Secretary of State, she failed to 
observe certain security rules. Her email headings were wrong when she was talking to her daughter, Chelsea. You know, those effects were actually constantly in the news cycle to distract the people from focusing on this in a moral wickedness and the ter turpitude of Donald Trump. But anyway, it doesn't matter, you know, without the sword, I do not think she was mistaken about the Jeff's identity. That was the real reason I've been constantly, you know, hashing over um, this particular remark echoing Donald Trump's misogyny, uh, misogyny, misogyny. I mean, I didn't, I didn't actually make any mistake, you know, but, you know, definitely one little mistake, you know, but I, I really eventually could have realized what was that. I mean, not really a real mistake, but, you know, if he let me finish the clip, you know, I, I think I would have noticed it, but, you know, I was, you know, not perceiving Larry David as a monster. No, I didn't. Because, you know, it was very obvious from the very beginning that this lady had a certain acquaintance with uh, Larry David. You know, he he was portrayed as a regular frequenting her shop or something like that. I didn't really watch the entire episode. I don't know. But, you know, at least, you know, when she was talking to him as if, you know, Larry David was really not to him, not to her. So I immediately was able to get the idea that, you know, she was referring to Jeff when she said this monster, quote unquote. It was pretty much obvious. So I was really annoyed. I mean I real so far I tried my very best to explain every little every little line there. It was not really difficult. I don't really need to repeat every little line. I try to actually explain, you know, what type of message it could have possibly be underlying in this context. I really did. But I have to stop it. <laughs> Yes. All right, two seats at the sushi bar. See, you know, he is now in a Japanese restaurant. He's more like a cynic or a misanthropist, a misanthropist, right? Who's not really necessarily appreciated his company in general. He doesn't really want anyone to be nearby him or to be seated in his vicinity, right? So, you know, he decided to, you know, wave his magic wand. Again, it's a silver bullet to him. Once he actually, you know, put, on, put this hat on, in this town, this works really well. Everyone felt so disgusted. Or at least, you know, what they were, they didn't, if, if they didn't really actually get a gut-wrenching feeling, at least they were slightly being annoyed, right? So they decide to leave. These, you know, um, um, two people were in the first place happy to find or secure two spots, right? So they could have sit down. But they actually, you know, uh, I mean, upon noticing Larry Davis, I mean, wearing this hat, you know, everything was changed. They decide to leave, right? I mean, this reflected in you know, this area is local prejudice too. People really don't appreciate any conservative or any non-democratic support, right? If you are not a part of the party called the Democrat, Democratic Party, then you might not necessarily be appreciated here. People are here more likely to be generous or diverse. So they do appreciate the religious or ethnic diversity or divergence. And this type of parochial, pro provincial approach by Donald Trump was rejected immediately, even in the personal life, at a personal level, right? So, you know, Larry knew that. Larry knew what type of a reaction he was inducing. He was actually bringing out from these people in the town. So he wanted to actually, you know, he just really actually used the situation so he could actually be away from other people, right? You can actually see that, right? 